doing? This is my how to use a skirt to level your bed, set nozzle gap, and improve print quality tutorial video. Um, skirts are a really important part of properly leveling your bed, properly setting the nozzle to bed gap, which is really important for first layer squish and getting your first layer to bond together, and it also serves a purpose of priming the nozzle. So when you're done extruding, you finish printing apart, some plastic drips out while the nozzle's still hot. Well, this will prime the nozzle so that when it goes to print the actual part, you don't have any issues with filament not being there leading to gaps in your first layer. So I use 10 lines of skirt, 10 millimeters away from the part, and I do two layers of skirt. So I have it go do with the first layer, and then I have it do another skirt with the second layer. And I do the second layer so I can see how any tweaks I did to the first layer improve the second. So every time the skirt's not perfect, I don't automatically cancel a print. I keep tweaking and I tweak the skirt on the fly while it's still printing. When the hope is that you can get the skirt printed really nicely before it even starts printing the first layer of the part. And then you're pretty safe to assume that you're going to have a beautiful part. So this is an example of a nice skirt. This skirt came off in one piece with only a little bit of effort. It obviously was stuck to the bed, but it didn't tear. It didn't have to be scraped off. You just had to get it started and then lift it up and peel it right off. This is another example of a good skirt. So holds up, it's stiff, all the lines of plastic are bonded together as one. There's a good view to see it. It's all bonded together. You can't see individual, you can see that the marks from the nozzle, but it's not individual pieces of plastic. It's one solid piece of plastic, so each line has bonded together into one. There's another decent looking skirt on the inside. The very outside edges, you can see where the nozzle was not close enough to the bed. That's what that shows, lower left and bottom. So as that was printing, I tweaked, and by the time you get to the inside, you can see that it's one piece of plastic. There's no sign of the individual lines that you can see on the outside. Okay. I'd like to show you an example of how you can save a part using skirt, okay? So this skirt here shows that the nozzle is too far from the bed all the way around when it first started printing, and especially over here was way too far from the bed. So this bed wasn't level as well as the gap was not set correctly. However, by tweaking as the part was printing, let me see if I can get, get you the angle I want to show, was able to save this part and get a really nice usable part. Flat, sturdy, doesn't move. So using the skirt and tweaking while it was there helped save the part and get a very nice part out of it. I'll show you an example of one that didn't need any tweaking at all, and that would be our Genesis T800. So if you look at that skirt, even if I, no matter how I zoom in, it's just one piece of plastic. And that led to getting a part that looks like that. Now the matte texture comes from the Anycubic Ultra Base. It introduces a matte texture into the part. Here's a couple interesting ones I want to show you. So, forgive me, the one on the left was stuck to the bed too hard. These were both printed on the Michelangelo with uh, Gecko Tech Cold. And the one on the right was, uh, the gap was just a touch too high between the nozzle and the bed, as you can see by the skirt. If you can get a good look at the skirt. You can see the lines aren't formed together. Yet, if you look at this skirt right next to it, it's about a perfect skirt. 
Well, this one I made the mistake of grabbing the dragon up top instead of by the base when I went to remove it from the uh, Gecko Tech Cold, and I broke it. However, that's what the surface looks like. A really, really nice first layer from that really, really nice skirt. Now over here, this shows being able to save one. So this skirt looks pretty bad. Yet, you know, just the inside couple rows, you can see it's starting to get better. And then if you look here, I kept tweaking. And although you can see that the lines are not quite as smushed together as the other one, you can see the difference, I got a very nice usable part out of it. So, you have a little variation, is the point. So let's try to get the two on the right angle so you can see them together here. I can show you one or the other, it's just hard to get them both angled perfectly. That one there, the lines look thinner. They're smushed together better. There is better first layer adhesion between all those lines. This one, although it came out with a nice glossy finish, under the right light, you can see that the lines are bigger right there. You can see those lines are bigger. But that's an example of using the skirt to save the part and to get a nice usable part out of it. Uh, here's another example of that. Because I think this is the most important part of this video and what I want everyone to take away from it is to turn on a skirt, use it every time you print, and save your prints. Pay attention to the skirt for the first couple lines, and when you get it dialed in, it's walk away. So here's a skirt that looks as bad as that last one, except in the center. You can see it's starting to get better. It's getting better and better, although it's not perfect. Yet, this is the surface of the part. Pretty darn good. A very nice, usable print that came out of that. So, if I didn't have a skirt turned on, and I was printing like that, I likely wouldn't have any part at all. I'd have a big ball of plastic sitting on the end of the nozzle. Because as you can see that that piece broke away, that one string broke away, so would have the part broke away from the bed. So, proper bed gap is one of the most important things for adhesion of the part to the bed. If you don't squish the first layer enough, part won't stick to the bed properly and then it'll pull off either mid print immediately doesn't really matter it, it leads to issues and then it also leads to quality issues in the print so for example this is what happens when the part pulls off the bed this was printed on the Michelangelo which has an unheated bed before I switched to gecko tech and it's actually rounded at the bottom you can almost see it like a little like a canoe bottom However, I reprinted it with the Gecko Tech. I'm on this. And there's nothing. It doesn't move at all. And it's got a beautiful finish. So, but that came from a beautiful skirt. But what's ironic, it's not a perfect skirt. It's just a very nice skirt doesn't show many flaws it shows possibly too high of a nozzle gap and that's the one that printed the really nice one the one that rocks all over the place and again i just want to show you this but this is a relation to unheated beds has what i would call a perfect skirt that skirt printed really really nice is bonded really well however the part peeled off the bed anyway but that's only because of an unheated bed. Got one more example for you here. Okay, so the last thing I want to cover is examples of a skirt that's too close to the bed or completely uneven. So this skirt here, in the upper left hand corner, you can see that the nozzle was too far away from the bed. Okay, and like most of them it gets better towards the inside than the outside. However, if you look over here, it's actually see-through. You can see through the plastic, whereas you can't in other spots. Or barely can. Here you can see fairly clearly through it 
because it's paper thin over there compared to on this side where it was much thicker. So in this case, the front right corner of the bed, the nozzle was too close. The back left corner, the nozzle was too far. Too close is just as much of a problem as too far. That's what leads to plugged hot ends. It can lead to your extruder clicking, a bunch of other things. So this is another example of too close. This side is a bit too far away, especially this corner. Up here is a little better, but not great. And then you come over here, and it's paper thin right there. So the, that right side of the bed, the nozzle was too close to the bed, and it caused that. This is an extreme case of that. This is what the skirt looks like. If you uh, really make it too thin and your nozzle gap is way off. Comes off in pieces. You almost have to use a razor blade to get it off. See how thin that is? It's see-through. You can see that it's see-through, whereas that part is far less uh, opaque. Or I should say it's more opaque and it's far less see-through. Transparent. Um, the transparent nature right here is caused by it being smashed too far down into the bed. Extreme cases of that, you'll have to get a razor blade to try to scrape it off of the bed. So that's a few examples of when your nozzle gap is too close. I hope you guys have all appreciated the video. Um, I hope you understand.